Good morning. Thank you everyone for coming out this morning. We're gathered here under the coalition of groups under Hillsborough Community Protection Coalition. And that encompasses a group of the, the Hillsborough County Branch NAACP, Care of Florida, Fight for 15, clergy, pastors, and concerned citizens of Hillsborough County. We have a host of speakers for you this morning. Our first speaker will be Chloe Coney, who's the founder of the Corporation to Develop Communities of Tampa and the former district director for U.S. Congresswoman, Kathy Castor. Good morning. It's, it is indeed an honor to be here. Last week, I felt compelled to go before Hillsborough County Commissioners because I have my own personal story. Being raised here in Tampa, and I'm 66 years old, so when I was little, I had to drink from the colored water fountain. I had to go to the back of the bus. So at the age of 13, that was 1963, I made a conscious decision to leave my all black school at Just Junior High School to integrate the school system and go to West Tampa, go to Old Jefferson. But boy, when I got to Hillsboro, Big Red, that was a rude awakening for a 16 year old girl. I was called nigger. I was told that I was dumb, stupid, even though I graduated with honors from their school. But then I can understand why the prejudice and the hatred exists at the school. Went to the pep rally, and the teachers and the children with the flag, the Confederate flag, running up and down the auditorium, and everybody standing up, excited, singing Dixie and the land of cotton. Well, as a 16-year-old child, I cried because it was my ancestors in that cotton field that was beaten, raped, lynched. So I left a scar on me. So also today, standing here telling my second story, when I finished from Florida A&M in 1972, I was hired out of this courthouse as the very first black probation female here. And guess what? My first month on the job, June of 1972, I went with my supervisor, Chuck Hurd, out to Ruskin to do a pre-sentence investigation. When he stopped for gas, a guy ran out from the filling station with a gun, threatened me to kill me because they thought I was his girlfriend. My supervisor saying, Chloe, Chloe, get your badge because you're a probation officer. Get it out. And I'm fumbling around. In my mind, I can see myself being shot and killed. So why am I saying all of this today? Because we know prejudice, racism still exists. If we allow this Confederate statue to still stand here, I'm grateful that Congresswoman Castro took me to Selma for the 50th year march. And I heard Peggy Wallace Kennedy say on that Montgomery Capitol, Today, I'm going to correct history. My son went through the African American Museum and saw my father with a, a, a hose letting them put it on black children and stopping kids from starting the school. And my son said to me, Mama, why is Papa doing that to the people? And she made a conscious decision to correct history, to make it right. And she called up Congressman John Lewis and said, today, I'm going to do what is right, and I'm going to welcome you home, John Lewis. So when I went last week, I was not welcome home, telling my story, talking about the scars, talking about the terrible things that we went through. So today, I hope again, that Tampa will do the right thing, the Hillsborough County Commissioners will do the right thing and move this Confederate statute, move it over to Oakland uh, Cemetery where you have whites and blacks and Confederate and whoever, the diversity that Commissioner uh, Chris was talking about. Move it over there to the cemetery, but stop and move it from where people come from justice. Please have them to move it. Thank you, move it.
Thank you, Ms. Cloney. Our second, our second speaker is Eider McKeck, Civil Rights Coordinator of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. The next speaker is Dr. Benny Small, president of the Hillsborough County Branch NAACP. First of all, I'd like to thank you for having the opportunity of being here. Several things I want to point out to you is that I'm a lifetime resident of Hillsborough County and have seen many discrimination cases that has been embarked here. I can remember the crest downtown where they march. I can remember being one of the first students to go to the University of South Florida, and we had what we call as the university restaurant. They admitted us there to be part of the university, but the university restaurant would not accept blacks into it. They wanted us to go around to the back door. But there's a bigger story that I want to tell. I'm a Vietnam vet. By being a Vietnam vet, when we went to fight, which we didn't have a choice, they was drafting us into the war. Several things happened when we came back. People throw their fingers up at us, saying you are not welcome home, that you need to get out of town. They didn't give us the due process dealing with housing loans and et cetera. And now I'm looking behind me and I'm saying that they're saying let a Confederate statue stay up. We go back to 1911 when these things happened. But my history goes back further than that. In the lynching and the calling of niggers here in Hillsborough County and asking to move from one neighborhood to another. But one of the most symbolic things that I can say is that being a product of Hillsborough County, I also work right here in this courthouse. My office was upstairs there. I was a probation officer. And going out in many times, the probation officers was basically set up for one, for the Afro-Americans. They could not arrest or talk to the white people that was actually involved in crime. However, I was able to go further and was able to get some things straightened out. My concern here is, is that Confederate flag, we appreciate those who want to protect their history, but it's just not the place here. If you're going to come and look for justice, how can you look for justice and you got injustice placed in front of you when you go in the courthouse? Now we know that when you go and talk with the judges, chances are cases are going to be looked upon, not necessarily because of the fact of the offense, but it's going to be looked upon a base of your economics and how you look and cases are decided about that. We have statistics to support that. And then final, we got another call came in the other day from Riverview. You got a Catholic church up there that somebody went out and sprayed out hoskos on the, on the side of the church. People not doing anything, they're worshiping, just like anybody else, which they have the right to do. A Couple of days ago, I was in Hudson. You had the Ku Klux Klan down there, putting out flyers, telling the people to get out, move around don't get involved or get involved in their organization. What I am saying, the time has changed in this country. We must make some progress. We, meaning at the NAACP, are looking at other things. We're looking at economic factors. You got a Super Bowl coming here, Bennett within one mile from here is doing a development of property. You got the NFL, you got the hockey. It's time now that the groups get together and rally and say, hey, you don't want to do it, then let's move it to a better stage. But rather than go there, we're asking you, we're backing you. Take this statue down and let people live the way that they want to. Hate is not come through by way of years. Hate is something that is incorporated into your life. Somebody are teaching you hate. I'm looking around, I'm seeing the younger people here in this community that are here today. What is happening? Somebody had to teach them hate when I look around throughout this community. Hate has risen almost 40% in this county in the last six months. So what I'm asking, please take it down, put it to another area. You want to protect or provide for your freedom or your rights or your history, just put it to another museum and let progress go on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Small. Our next speaker is the Reverend Dr. Russell L. Meyer, who's the Executive Director of the Florida Council of Churches and the pastor of New Parish, Tampa, St. Paul, and Faith Lutheran Churches. Thank you, Natasha. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming out today to be part of this event. Appreciate everyone who's here, all the clergy who are with us. Um, George Orwell said that <clears throat> When we let uh, lies run the day, then um, they will hate people who tell the truth. 
Jesus says, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We're here about freedom today. And it's a freedom about truth telling about history. And this monument does not originate from the Civil War. It originates from the time of the Black Codes. And it was intentionally put up here so that anyone who walked through the courthouse doors of Hillsborough County would know that injustice and inequality is the rule of the day in this county. And if that's still the case, then the four commissioners who voted to leave it here, they need to come out and say that. That's what they need to say, not vote on whether or not to remove the monument, but stand up in the light of day and say, we believe in inequality and injustice. Last night, one of our young people tried to speak at the commission hearing in Ruskin on transportation, tried to make the connection between racism and transportation historically in this county, and was shut down by one of our white male commissioners before she could even finish her second sentence. That ain't right. Well, I've lived in this county for 22 years. When we lived in Plant City, farm workers were treated as second class citizens. Still happening today. When we moved over into Tampa Palms, it's very clear the way policing happens in Tampa Palms and the way policing happens in East Tampa. It's not right. When we look around this county and this city, what we see is the persistence of racism in every one of our institutions. Employment, schools, housing, health care, the courthouse, the county jail, the persistence of clear racial disparity easily mapped by any measure of statistical uh, information you can find online persists to this day in this county and this statue represents the history and the transmission of that racial disparity. The removal of this uh, monument to a more befitting place is the first step in saying we're going to be intentional about righting the historical wrong that has been the long history of Tampa. You go all the way back to the founding of Tampa and Fort Brooke, which was the launching station for the indigenous genocide of the Seminoles. The history of this county is baked deep in racism. Yes. And the day has come when enough of us have read the various histories of the people who live here to say, let's tell the whole truth so that all the people can be free. And it's time for every one of the county commissioners to come clean with the whole truth of the whole history of Hillsborough County. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth will remove this monument from the front doors of this county courthouse so that everybody who walks through knows that justice, justice in this county, well, there's equality before the law. That's what we ask for. Nothing less and nothing more. Thank you, Reverend Meyer. Our next speaker is Tampa City Councilman Louis Vera of District 7. Thank you very much, everybody. I just want to say what a real pleasure and honor it is to be here today. We're here today really to affirm a set of values. You know, every single year, I always take my son to Arlington Cemetery. And I do that in Washington, D.C., to teach him about heroes and to teach him about the values that make our country great. And when I think about the great men and women who we honor in Arlington Cemetery and in our armed forces, including Dr. Small, the Vietnam veteran, I think about the values that they fought for. The values all the way from Lexington and Concord to Gettysburg to the, to the, the Americans parachuting into Normandy on D-Day onward to the Americans in September of 1950 who fought in, it, in the Battle of Inchon of the Korean War all the way to today. When I think about those values, I think about values that directly contradict what the Confederate States of America stood for and what its legacy stands for here today. Indeed, think about our country's history. I always say that the United States has always benefited from what I call progressive liberty. 
the idea that as time goes by, that original idea found by our founding fathers was expanded to more and more Americans. We saw eventually women, African Americans, immigrants, Hispanics, Jewish Americans, those with disabilities, onward and forward, have more and more of the protections that we initially had in this country. When I take a look at that progressive liberty, and when I think of the forces that fought against that progressive liberty, I can't help but to think about the values of the Confederate States of America and what this monument here represents today. I'm not here as a person who's looking to divide this community. I'm here as a person who's looking to unite this community behind the best American values that I believe we all agree with, Republican and Democrat. Indeed, I don't see this issue as a partisan issue. I, I've talked to many Republicans and Democrats and independents, liberals and conservatives, who say that, to quote Indiana Jones, it belongs in a museum. It doesn't belong here. It belongs somewhere else because that monument does not reflect our best values. I think of a quote that I recently found from none other than President George W. Bush, who said that a great nation doesn't hide its history, it phases its flaws, and it corrects them. That's what we've done throughout our best moments in history, and I believe that that's what we're trying to do here today. We're about building bridges, not building walls between people, and I firmly believe that when we talk to people who may oppose the moving of this monument, and we talk to them about the community's experiences that ultimately we will build bridges on this issue. So I just wanted to thank everybody for coming here today and I would urge everybody to build bridges on this issue. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Councilman. Our next speaker is Hillsborough County Commissioner, Pat Patricia Kemp. Thank you so much. We've heard, thank you all for being here. We've heard um, so much um, history, and it has me thinking a lot about history. Um, my father is interred at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, his grandfather was a Confederate soldier, uh, and I have no doubt that my father would be standing here if he was uh, around to be here and be very proud of me for standing here and taking the vote I did and joining with Commissioner Les Miller. I thank him for um, putting forward uh, a proposal to move this Confederate monument from these courthouse grounds. Uh, we've heard a lot about how we need to uh, write history and put this monument in a place uh, away from here, a place where it can be seen, a place where we respect our history, where we put it in context, but not on our courthouse grounds. Uh, since this vote was taken uh, last Wednesday, I've been contacted and stopped by many, many people who have said to me, is there a time for reconsideration? Um, will this come back? What can we do now? It's been a real outpouring for, for me personally um, and for, for me uh, on all the different venues that I have. And I've said to everyone, yes, this can come back, this can be reconsidered. And any commissioner can bring this forward in the future. It really will depend on the will of the community uh, to go forward and reconsider removing this Confederate monument from these courthouse grounds. Uh, so. I think the vote that we took last Wednesday was a message that was sent across the country, really. Um, people have been looking at Hillsborough County and at Tampa and how we're dealing with this. Um, many of you may know that just as we were taking that vote last week, they were removing a Confederate statue from downtown Orlando. Woo! Woo! that they took a vote already to remove a Confederate statue in Gainesville. And that, and that communities across the country uh, are looking at this history and are considering this history and making a decision respectfully to do the same and to put these monuments not in a, uh, a place where they are uh, put forward and bring such pain forward and speak to such divisions in the community, but a place where they can be put in their proper context 
um, and moved to a, a more appropriate place. So 